Hi and welcome to this lecture on histology for stratified epithelial tissues. A couple things to keep in mind. Number one, while these will help you to prepare for any exam that you might be taking, keep in mind that nothing takes the place of actually going and looking at the tissues within a microscope. That's because each slide preparation will look slightly different and the more of them that you can see the better off you'll be when it comes test or exam time. Number two, keep in mind these are epithelial tissues and as such when you are looking for them on the slide you are either looking at a lumen to see the epithelial tissues or the edge of the tissue preparation itself. I will point that out in these slides coming up. First slide we want to look at is stratified squamous. Please notice that I have the name of the tissue here at the bottom with where it's found along with the objective only magnification. These are stratified squamous epithelial cells as indicated by these, these yellow arrows and that would be from here to there. At this edge we will have the basal membrane or the membrane that will connect it to the connective tissue underneath and on this side it is the apical side. That is the free edge of this stratified layer. Let's take a slightly closer look. Here is the same tissue at a 10x objective and we can see that this is the tissue that we are looking for. It is multiple layers and it is epithelial style cells. Now when you are trying to identify cells, keep in mind that you want to look at the cells that are on the apical surface, not on the basal surface. These cells on the basal surface in this area will often have shapes that aren't typical of that tissue. The ones on the apical surface will. And it's because these cells here are compressed between the connective tissue on this side and the rest of the epithelial cells on that side. Here is a 40x view of that tissue and we can see that this is the basal membrane here and then we have our, all of our different layers of stratified squamous coming through here and the cells that we want to use to identify are more on this area on this edge of the slide. Here's a slide for stratified cuboidal. This is at a 10x magnification for the objective only. And the cells that we are looking for are in from here to there. Basal side here and the apical side here. Now all of these white areas that we see in this one and this one and this one here. These are all lumens. Here is a 40x objective view. We can see the basal membrane on this side. We can see the apical side here. That's all the way. And as you look, here is your first layer of cuboidal cells and here is your second layer of cuboidal cells. Now keep in mind when you're trying to identify these, one trick is to use the font adjustment and ever so slightly adjust it up and down so that you can help to see the cell membranes between the cells themselves. And that will help you to identify them as a cuboidal cell. The next slide is stratified columnar. This is in a salivary gland. It is at a 10x magnification and this is our lumen and here is our stratified columnar. Now one thing that I want you to note for our stratified columnar, see these rows of things that look like purple dots? Those are actually the nuclei of the cells themselves. Notice how you have some space in between 
those nuclei. This is going to help to differentiate it from pseudostratified columnar, which I will point out here in a little bit. On a 40x objective magnification, we can clearly see the individual round nuclei and we could see the different layers. Here's the first layer, here's the second layer of the columnar cells. This is the apical side and then at the this edge we have the basal side. Now here is ciliated pseudostratified columnar. This is in the trachea at a 40x magnification. Now on the last slide you could see that nice delineation between the two layers of cells and the nuclei were spread apart. Here notice that all these nuclei seem to be jammed together within these columnar cells. That's going to help identify it as pseudostratified. It's not the only indication but it does help indicate. On the apical side here we can see the cilia. Those are tiny hair-like projections that are used to produce movement. We can see the goblet cells which are the spaces. You can also see that within the stratified columnar some as well. These goblet cells produce mucus. In the case of the trachea this mucus is used to capture dust and debris from the airway and then the cilia will propel it to the top of the trachea where you can swallow it and get rid of that dirt into the stomach. Here is transitional epithelial. Transitional epithelial can be tricky. This is from the bladder at a 10x magnification. The reason it can be tricky is because it resembles stratified squamous and sometimes it can be tough to tell apart. Here it is at a 40x objective and one of the things that help is that you will see these apical cells will be very rounded that you see here and you also see multinucleate cells or cells that have more than one nucleus that is very characteristic of transitional epithelial and also you will see these cells in this layer right here that kind of cap the top of the transitional epithelial and keep in mind what the function of transitional epithelium is it is to stretch within the bladder or ureters within the body to allow urine to occupy that space so it has to be able to stretch so that the bladder can fill up with urine itself and if you were to look at these cells when they were stretched they would be much much more flat 